I'm in the Embered Manager screen and I have chosen a design that I want to make a couple changes to before I stitch it out. Once it's open, click Editor. Now that we're in the Editing section, we can make changes. I've decided that I want to stitch out this design, but I don't want the butterfly. That's easily removed. But remember, first of all, you always want to make a copy of the design you're working on so you don't ruin your original. So save as, we're saving it as a Pez, OK, and let's give it a new name. I'm just going to type revised at the end so I'll know that this is the one I made changes to. Hit the enter key on your keyboard to save it. The new title comes up revised so you know that this is one you can work on. OK, I don't want the butterfly. It's easily removed by clicking once on the freehand select mode and then click around it and it will leave these lines and as you click close to the beginning of the line double click and now you've got this part selected because it's turned red you'll know it's selected. Come over here and click once on split. Now you'll see you have your baby deer in the top and your butterfly is selected. You can tell it's selected because it has a box around it. We're going to right click, delete. Now I have the design without the butterfly. But I've noticed that there's something else I'd like to change in this design before I stitch it out. I know we've talked before that you don't need to worry about the colors in your design because you can choose those while you're at your machine. But I noticed that in this design the color of the petals of the flowers and the inner eye is the same. Now if I wanted to go to my machine and stitch out these flowers in a bright red, then that means it's also going to stitch his eye in a bright red and I don't want that. So what we're going to do is find that color here and it's the gray one. And what I'm going to do is right click and choose hide all colors except this one. Now you'll see that you can change this. We're going to select that freehand select mode again by clicking once and then I'm going to make room around that. Remember double click when you get to the beginning and it'll choose that. Then we're going to split and you'll see the eyes are there on their own now. We can make them whatever color we want by right clicking on the color square choose change color and when the screen comes up change it to the color you want. I Normally the inner eye would be white but white will not show up on your screen so that's why a gray is good so I'm going to go cancel because that gray will work just well so I can see it on my machine. Let's go to this gray that's left here where the petals were and right click on that and change color. I want to change those petals to red. OK. Now that I've made the changes that I like, I need to combine this design together again. So I'm going to click on the top square, hold my shift key down, click on the second square, and then join them together. So what's going to happen now is, oops, it looks like the white inner eye is going to stitch on top. That's probably not what I want to happen. So on your keyboard, press Control and Z, and that'll take you back to the step that you did before. Control Z means undo. So what I want to do now is I'm going to right click on the red square where I changed the petals, and I'm going to choose Split After Color. Okay, so now I've got three squares here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move these eyes by clicking once and dragging it up before the deer. And I'm going to choose Swap Objects. Let's turn on all the colors by choosing Show All Colors. And now they're behind the color and that's right. So now I can choose to combine all of these by pressing my Control key on my keyboard and clicking each box. Then I click Join and then I'm going to need to save it. 
I usually like to insert basting stitches before I go to my machine. So while this is selected, choose Insert, Basting Stitches, OK, and now you'll see that the basting stitches are here. It looks like the basting stitches are really, really close to the edge, so we'll see if this will allow us to save the design or not. If it's too large for this hoop, it will not allow us to save it. Let's find out. I need to combine these. So the first one is selected. Then I'm going to press my control key on my keyboard and click the second one. Choose join. And when I press save, it'll tell me whether or not it's too large for the hoop. It does not fit within the field. Okay, so what we're going to need to do is make some changes here. One of the questions is continue anyway. I'm going to say no because I don't want to save it that way. I'm going to right click on that first blue color which is the basting stitch and I'm going to separate color. It's selected so I'm going to right click, delete, and I'm going to start over. Be sure to click the design to make sure it's selected. Insert basting stitches and on the offset where it says 2 I'm going to change it to 0, 0.0 and see if that helps us. OK. Now I've got new basting stitches. Again, I'm going to join them together by pressing the control key on my keyboard, clicking, join. And now when I save, let's see if we still get that message that it doesn't fit. No, it's fine. Now, since this video is being made for my sister who only has a 5x7 hoop. She does not have a 4x4. Four four. I'm going to now change this to the hoop size that she uses on her machine. What I'm going to do is go to Options, Hoop Size, and I'm going to choose the 5x7 by, by clicking there, OK, and now that 4x4 four four design will fit in a 5x7 hoop. I'm going to click here to center the design and then click here to save and now my sister can take this design to her machine. Thank you very much.